Hi there YouTube, Paul Raven, Brainsborn and Barbells.com. Now it's been a while, stick around, let's talk vitamin D. Please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. Make some noise down in the comments section, let me know what you want to hear about next. So now we're moving out of the summer months and the summer season into the season of autumn. Those of us who are living within the upper aspects of the northern hemisphere, particularly those of us that live above the 36 and 37 degree parallel, we should really be trying to get a handle on our vitamin D levels to ensure optimum health and optimum recovery. The structure and formation of this vitamin is really important. Vitamin D being fat soluble has the ability to store and build up within the body. Now whilst this may be very beneficial, it can bring about some drawbacks as excessive consumption, excessive intakes of this vitamin can lead to toxicity. So what about sources of vitamin D? Well, vitamin D can be sourced within our daily diet through foods such as oily fish, eggs, some dairy. However, it's important to stress, not all. Now, other than dietary intake, another key way that humans obtain vitamin D is through that of the sun. When the sun emits ultraviolet rays and we're exposed to such rays, this is where we can produce and create and synthesize our vitamin D. So the UV rays from the sun makes contact with our skin and upon sufficient exposure, the 7 dehydrocholesterol within the skin is converted and synthesized into cholecalciferol, vitamin D3. This newly synthesized vitamin D3, when in the blood, becomes bound to by proteins. It is then shuttled to the liver, where it is then converted into 25-hydroxy vitamin D, otherwise known as calcidiol. This newly converted 25-hydroxy vitamin D is the form of vitamin D within the body which is associated with that storage. That being said, this will be the typical vitamin D which will be highlighted if you happen to have a blood draw or a blood test and it is this type of vitamin D or this form of vitamin D that will be looked at. Monitoring these levels within the body now couldn't be any easier or convenient. To monitor my vitamin D levels and other blood markers, I use a company called MediChex. Fast and easy and efficient. I will leave a link down below to the vitamin D test. Go ahead and check it out. So now in the liver, we have the stored form of vitamin D, calcidiol. However, in order to use this form of vitamin D, where it will be metabolized and used up in other parts and tissues of the body, it will be transported there and then converted again into what's called calcitriol, otherwise known as 125-dehydroxy vitamin D. The functional properties of vitamin D, however, are vast, some of which we'll touch on. So bone metabolism, vitamin D stimulate that of the increase of calcium absorption within the intestinal space and also support that of bone metabolism. Immunological benefits, ranging from protection of the respiratory space, so protection against um, viruses, the, the cold and the flu virus providing some protection there, uh, ranging to other immunological benefits, some research showing protection against colorectal cancers and heart disease, other functionalities including that of hormonal balance, looking at vitamin D and its structure, it is characteristically similar to other hormones and also functions itself as a steroidal chemical messenger. With all of that knowledge now brought to the table, let's talk intakes. The Scientific Advisory Committee of Nutrition provide a recommended nutrient intake and suggest that we intake 400 international units or IUs of vitamin D from dietary sources a day and that should be sufficient each day over the course of a year. Now, to quantify this, your typical medium egg contains 64 IUs of vitamin D. You would need to consume six and a quarter whole eggs per day to meet the upper range of the reference intakes given by the committee. Wow. 
Now those of you interested in the macronutrient breakdown of that, those six and a quarter whole eggs will cost you 413 calories, 29 grams of fat and 40 grams of protein. That aside, some research looking into the chronic long-term usage of supplementation of vitamin D at doses of 10,000 IUs didn't actually show any signs of toxicity. That being said, do your own due diligence, do your own reading around this. I am not in any way, shape or form a doctor or prescribing physician. So to elaborate on that case a little further, an interesting observation and discussion around vitamin D and how it impacts on blood levels and serum levels within the blood, ingested doses of vitamin D reflect somewhat a little differently in terms of their blood values. So individuals taking four, eight or even 10,000 IUs of vitamin D a day, um, they do not uniformly reflect those dosages taken within the blood. So that's also something that you may want to look out for and something you may also want to do a little bit of reading around as it's quite an interesting observation to be made. Most preparations that you will find in the store or online you'll see that they are dosed within preparations of 1,000 IUs to 4,000 IUs, and you may find some preparations dosed at 500 IUs or 12.5 micrograms. So with all of this in mind, gym goers, athletes, sports people alike, often but not come with increased nutrient demands, resultant from higher metabolic turnovers and external stresses on the body. Thus, it would seem plausible that a supplement, a preparation of 4,000 IUs would be a fair start with what I feel the upper ceiling being 10,000 IUs. Personally, for myself, I take eight to 10,000 IUs of vitamin D daily from the end of September right the way through to the end of March, where then March, through till the end of August, I drop the vitamin D supplementation down to around 4,000 IUs, where I can accumulate further vitamin D intake from dietary sources, and of course, that very much welcome sun. Please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. Make some noise down in the comments section. Let me know what you want to hear about next. Let me know the topics, let me know your thoughts on the topics. Let's start to create a little bit of discussion down there. Until next time, take care.